Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo. Right, come along, everyone. I can see finished to the day. Come along, Nicky. Um, Is it real? Home to bed to get ready for the gala dance tomorrow. I can't wait. Goodbye, everyone. Don't forget your next lesson. Bye. Good night. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Mr. Bye. Steed. You're going to be our star pupil. You'll be here tomorrow, on time. Oh, you couldn't keep me away. Good night. Good night. Ah, uh, Ivor, did all go well? Easy. No trouble at all. Bernard is as dead as a doornail. Good. The boss will be pleased. I'll tell him myself. You can also tell him about John Steed. What about him? He will be our next victim. <laughs> Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Water Omo has really powerful cleaning action. Mrs. Senior discovered this. My husband wears overalls to work, and they come back very sort of greasy and dirty. My girl actually does them by hand in the tub, but she uses cold water Omo, and they're fine, and they come up perfectly clean. They say once an Omo user, always an Omo user? I've stuck to cold water Omo, and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. Cold water Omo cleans best. Now you can choose from Benolia's five new classic fragrances. Episode six, the final episode of this story, in which John Seed and Emma Peel go into their dance and solve all the problems caused by the quick, quick, slow death. John Seed and Emma Peel were now quite convinced that the dance salon at Terpsichorean training techniques was a cover-up organization. They knew there was at least one imposter as a client, and they were sure there was a direct link between the activities of the dancing school and several mysterious and gruesome murders. There was a gala night planned, and Mrs. Peel got to the studios early. Not because she wanted to practice, oh no, she wanted to snoop. In a corridor flanking the main ballroom, it was clear that someone was rehearsing. That someone was Lucille Banks, who ran the place. Mrs. Peel followed the voice down the corridor. There was a small sunlight. From beyond came the sound of a dancing room. I've just got to risk it. A packing case. Mrs. Peel climbed onto the packing case and looked through the sunlight. To her amazement, Lucille was dancing with a tailored dummy and talking to someone in the shadows. He's got to be absolutely smooth. Slide into it. No hesitation. One and two and one and two. Mrs. Peel, to her amazement, saw the dummy had card number nine on its back. Lucille steered it cunningly towards a big arched display piece at the end of the room. Be ready now. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Close back. Quick and slow. Lucille disappeared behind the display piece and appeared out of the other side. Her partner now was a real man. The dummy had been Jefferson. The man wore identical clothes and had the number nine on his back. Splendid. Splendid, Boris. Much better. You did that perfectly. You'll be in perfect form for the takeover this evening. Mrs. Peel had seen enough. She jumped down into the corridor and was hastily replacing the packing case in its original position when Chester Reed appeared, all bleary-eyed and slightly incoherent. What? What are you doing out here? Uh, well, I was looking for another door. The usual one in today's lock. Oh. Oh, that's all right. It's only the field. The head. <laughs> rehearsing for tonight. <laughs> Scarlet night, you know, tonight. Yes. Scarlet night. 
In Mitchin and Co. dress hire, John Steed was also preparing for gala night. He was resplendent in full tails. Cider was fitting him. A splendid fit, sir. Yes, splendid fit. Thank you. Now, um, where is the gentleman's secret pocket? Oh, right here, sir. Cider indicated the secret pocket in the waistband of the trousers. Ah, excellent. Steed dropped a miniature gun into the pocket. Might run into a spot of bother tonight. Uh, can't be too careful. Uh, I see. Um, uh, no, if, if you will forgive me, sir, that the suit, you you won't forget it. It is on hire. And if damaged, the deposit will... have will... to be forfeited. Yes, I know. But don't worry. If the worst comes to worst, I'll uh, endeavor to get shot where it doesn't show. Uh, very thoughtful of you, sir. Thank you so much. Best of luck. <laughs> And later, at the dance salon, things were really swinging. Oh, Dad, you could make it. Oh, I wouldn't miss one of your little parties for the world, Miss Banks. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mr. Steed, how splendid you look. Good evening, Miss Banks. This is your first experience of one of our little events. Please feel free to move around and enjoy yourself. Steve moved on and managed to get himself alongside both the canapes and Mrs. Beale. Good steering. Steve, this is bigger than we think. You mean it's bigger than both of us? Mr. Beale, I... I mean this organization. It's some sort of swap system, a takeover. A takeover of another person, another man's personality. I saw the whole dress rehearsal. The scene danced around the ballroom, a quick whirl out of sight behind some scenery, and a change of partner. Mm, sort of much. The real purpose of the school is to infiltrate foreign agents into the country. You first select the lonely, anonymous bastard. Who no one's going to miss. Get rid of him and replace him with a highly trained agent. Off with the old, on with the new. Well, this method. I don't want to make those yet, though. I'd like to catch them red-handed. Well, you'll get your chance tonight. They're planning another swap. That's right. Any idea who it is? Mm-mm, I haven't found out yet, but his watch is yet Lucille. Oh, no, 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 dear Mrs. Beale. Even if you went down on your bended knees and begged, I'd, I'd absolutely booked up until dance number 12. Of course, I, I might be able to fit you in between Sir Roger de Coverley and the Lancers. Oh, the thanks. Mr. Steve, they're all getting into the ballroom. If you're ready. Certainly, certainly. Uh, don't give up hope, Mrs. Beale. I may have a cancellation. Mrs. Beale hung back as all the guests trooped in. She had bound a potted palm when Ivor Bracewell approached was the man she'd seen rehearsing with Lucille. You go through there, to the back of the studio. He'll be wearing a number nine on his back, like you. I understand every yes. Good. And also go, no slip-ups. The boss doesn't like him. Mrs. Peel, sure now that she was right, moved into the ballroom, where Lucille was making a speech. I must explain that this is now competition time. Yes, you read a kindly presented to the judges. It will be on your dancing alone. Uh. Steve? Yeah, no. Steve, I've located the next victim. Who? He'll be wearing number nine. Yeah. Steve, this is your number. Ah, six. Oh, we can eliminate me. Ah, oh, Mrs. Peel, I understand you've been chosen to partner me. I was grateful. How nice. Who would have thought it, Mr. Steve? We are dancing together. Oh, are we? Come, uh, Lucille. Allow me to pin the number on you. Lucille moved behind Steve, and the two pins provided pinned the number on his back. But he hadn't got eyes in your head, Steve. She put the six on upside down. You're number nine. At that point, the music started up. The one o'clock jump. <laughs> Peel took to the floor with the obnoxious bracelet pressing so tightly against her she could hardly breathe. So concerned was she with her own plight that it wasn't until some while later that she got a glimpse of Steve's back. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Something wrong? No, nothing at all. Oh, but... Mrs. Peel caught Steve's eye and immediately oh, waved at her partner's back. Steve waved back nonchalantly. Mrs. Peel turned, braceful down, so that Steve could see he was wearing number six. Steve turned around. Oh, I, 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 Are you trying to do a reverse double? If you 
Maddie, Miss Maddie. Mrs. Veal and John C. contrived to steer their partners near the creature. You see, you are dancing with garlic sausage. Mrs. Veal looked down at Graceful's wrist. There was the tattoo. At this point, they both thought quickly and thought alike. Mrs. Veal put a hand round Graceful's shoulders and removed the top pin of his car. The six fell down and became a nine. Steed had a bit of difficulty scratching his back, but eventually withdrew the top pin of his card. It fell down and became a six. They danced towards the display piece at the end of the ballroom. Steed and Lucille sailed in first, and much to Lucille's surprise, out of the other side. Mrs. Peel and Bracewell followed them, and Boris, seeing the number nine on Bracewell's back, hit him hard with a cosh. Boris grabbed Mrs. Peel and danced out onto the floor. But Mrs. Peel conveniently tripped, got a hold, and threw him back behind the display. <coughs> Lucille, seeing what had happened, left Steed and rushed forward. Steed grabbed Mrs. Peel and said, Shall we dance? And did a quick polka to the nearest exit. Lucille, Peaver, and Chester Reed, leading the dance hall in chaos, rushed after them. Lucille made a bad choice. She crashed into Mrs. Peel. Mrs. Peel grabbed her by arm and leg and swung her around a few times. It's about time you tried the real apache stuff. <laughs> Lucille Banks took the whole length of the corridor before she came to rest, out cold. Peaver was mad enough to tackle Steve. Steve clobbered him with someone's dancing puzzle. <laughs> well, Mrs. Peel, let's the opposition clear away, I think. I think. You'll stay exactly where you are, both of you. Chester Reed, miraculously cured of any signs of drink, was facing them with a snub-nosed revolver in his hand. Chester Reed, the drunken band leader. Not drunken, but I am the leader, the boss. The one who persuaded Willie Fair to use your organization as an escape route to get his own back on the service that had downgraded him. But the man behind it all? That's right. Too bad you stumbled over all this, Mr. Steed. Oh, I don't know. I've enjoyed my lessons here. You know, the step I enjoyed the most was... Uh... The quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick. Like this! With enormous speed, Steed leapt forward and grabbed Reed's gun arm. And slow! <laughs> oh, Steed, I'm so sorry. Look at your evening jacket. Torn. And the bullet clipped the shoulder padding. Mrs. Peel, whenever I go out with you, I'm always prepared to lose my deposit. Sure, you've heard that by now. Let's shimmy off, shall we? Field gives a confidence that actually shows in your eyes. Put on Field deodorant, and it's dry in seconds. That's the way it stays right through the day. Field never makes you feel sticky. It just protects you and keeps you dry, feminine, fresh. Wear Field, and the only thing you show is confidence. So many women tell us that once an OMO user, always an OMO user. Women like Mrs. Clark of East London. This is certainly the one that I've stuck to. And it's all I get now. Yes, Goldwater OMO cleans best. Over a million housewives have proved it. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel. Is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden.